Hey everyone, welcome back to The Pen Habit. I'm Matt Armstrong, and I've got another pen review for you in this video. Today we're gonna to be talking about the Faber-Castell. This is the Ambition series, and it's the Coconut Wood Finish. So uh, this is a really interesting pen. I will give this to Faber-Castell. They are into design. Their pens don't look like anybody else's out there. And I, I feel like they've got a very um, Danish design aesthetic to them. Uh, very clean, very modern looking, straight lines, chrome, wood. Uh, I, in terms of looks, this is a really, really nice looking pen. Uh, let's let's talk a little bit about it though. So I'm going to go over here to the other camera and give you a little bit closer view here. So this is the pen. You'll notice it does, it's got the uh, Faber-Castell logo right here on the pen. And uh, chrome and the coconut wood finish. It's a pop top pen. Uh, and then you've got a little tiny chrome section here, stainless steel nib or steel nib. I would assume it's stainless steel. And uh, and then the cap here at the end. The cap will post pretty nicely on the end there. And, uh, and it's got a very nice seamless finish. So uh, very snazzy looking pen. Uh, I, I like the looks of this pen quite a bit. Let's let's talk the stats though. So um, capped, the pen runs uh, 139 millimeters. So it's a it's a decently long pen uh, when it's capped. And then uncapped, we're looking at 123. And then here's where the fun happens because there's the when you post the pen, there's only the small chrome section at the end. It's a pretty long pen when unposted. And we're looking here at. 158 millimeters. And then in terms of weight, man, I hate it when my scale turns itself off. Okay. Uh, we are looking there at 34 grams, not too shabby. Uh, I, I tend to like a heavier pen, so that works out pretty well for me. Um, in terms of the fit in the hand, this is, it, it fits, it fits well. Um, it's not too short for me. Um, this is a pen that I absolutely would not even bother trying to post when I write because this heavy cap and the length of the pen just really makes it want to fall backwards. And I can't stand that when I write. It, it causes me to grip the pen too hard. And the harder you grip, the sloppier your handwriting is. So in general, you want to avoid pens that pull themselves back as much as possible. Um, other interesting thing about this pen is you'll notice the nib does not have a breather hole. Uh, there's no breather hole in the nib. Uh, there, I, I have another Faber-Castell that I'll be showing you in, in the future as well. That one doesn't have a breather hole either. So that's, uh, that's something that they're doing on their nibs. Now, this is a converter cartridge pen or cartridge converter pen, as you say, and thank goodness, it does use standard international sizes. So if you saw my last video about the Pilot Metropolitan and my harangue about uh, proprietary cartridges and converters, Faber-Castell did the right thing and decided to use Standard International. Um, so I've got just a standard Schmidt converter on here. Uh, it didn't come with one, I don't believe. And so this worked. I just, I've got so many in my collection that I just grabbed one and it worked out just fine. Uh, metal fittings on the inside of the barrel, that's nice. Helps to, uh, to increase the longevity. In fact, I think the entire barrel is lined with brass. So the brass tube on the inside. The one thing I will say about this pen that I don't love is this ridiculous little section right here. So it's really short and narrow, and there's a pretty significant step up between the edge of the section and the edge of the wood. So the section's not long enough, not big enough to gris grab it, grasp it unless you got skinny little fingers and you grasp it all the way down at the end of the nib. And even then, there's just not enough space for your fingers. I'll see if I can show you here. There's just not enough space for your fingers on that section. And so you'll have to hold it a little bit further up. Um, the thing I find interesting about this, though, is most sections are kind of tapered as you get toward the, the beginning. This is cylindrical all the way through. Now, it steps down as you get to this little section, but there's no taper. So it just feels a little weird to me. It's not unusable. It's not terribly uncomfortable. It's just a little different than what I'm used to. Um, so 
if you're a person who's really particular about where your fingers sit on the pen, I would highly re recommend trying to find one of these and uh, and try it out to see how it fits in the pen. The, the coconut wood finish, and I don't know if it's actually coconut wood or if it's just, it's hard, I, I don't think it is actual coconut, but I don't know for sure. So uh, I, I suppose I could have looked that up before I started, but I didn't. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of writing. Uh, this is the Ambition Coconut. The nib is a steel nib, E-E-L, or stell nib, I suppose, uh, in medium. And the ink is Mont Blanc Irish Green. And uh, there is a review of this ink on the penhabit.com website that I just posted a, uh, a few posts back. Check the ink index or, or click on the, the ink link in the menu and you can go back and see the ink review. I like this ink a lot. Uh, it's probably my second favorite green behind Diamine Sherwood Green. Oh, oh, I, I forgot to mention. In, uh, in an earlier video, I asked someone who could finally pronounce, asked someone what the actual pronunciation of diamine was. And it's diamine, not diamine or diamine. So diamine. Yay. Thank you for the information. Now I feel, I feel at whole, at whole. I feel at peace, whatever. I'm going to stop talking and start writing. Okay. So let's do a little, uh, tribute to JFK since, uh, just the anniversary of his uh, assassination was just a few days or a few weeks ago. I have a hard time spelling, apparently. All right, uh, let me push this up the screen just a little bit here. Uh, this is actually a, a pretty darn smooth writer. Um, it's, 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 again, moderately wet. It, I wouldn't call this a juicy nib by any stretch of the imagination, but it's fairly smooth. Um, I did have to do a bit of smoothing to it. Um, and again, the, the nibs weren't, or the nib tines weren't perfectly in alignment, but they weren't bad. Um, I don't think most people would notice, but I'm really particular and I'm just like a super slick finish. Um, so a couple passes over with the uh, the micro mesh and, and a bit of nib alignment under a loop. And it, this this pen writes quite nicely for me now. In fact, I'm using it right now to, uh, to sign my Christmas cards because it's got this nice, lovely green ink in it. Um, in terms of nib, it's a medium nib, and so as a, it's a pretty rigid medium nib. You're not going to see much in the way of uh, of line variation here. It's just not, it, that's not what it's meant for. Uh, in terms of upside down, it will write, but it's super scratchy. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's a nice pen. Uh, This pen is all about the design. There's just really nothing more you can say about it other than this pen is about design. And it's a unique pen. There's nothing else like it on the market as far as I'm concerned except the other Ambition pens. And uh, and I have to hand it to Faber-Castell. It's a really interesting design for a pen. And I'm glad that the, the, we're seeing people do things different other than just the, the standard cigar shape or the, you know, th th that kind of thing. So... Those things have a place, but uh, I like that this is kind of modern. That tends to be more my aesthetic anyway. I like clean lines and things like that. So this is the Faber-Castell Ambition. Hope you've enjoyed this review. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Thanks for watching.